why don't we first start to talk about the quarterbacks a little bit? Um, are you pleased with what you're seeing out of Ty? I mean, we've talked about him knowing the offense better, being a little more confident, at all, et cetera. Is that, you know, showing through in practice or there has he been any setbacks or is he, you know, on a uphill, uh, you know, climb? Well, I, I think he's definitely in a way better spot than he was last year at this time. You know, going into the Marshall game has a way better understanding of the offense. I think overall in camp, he's had a really good camp. Um, you know, some days not as good, but for the majority of it, I thought he had a really good football, you know, really good camp. And I've been really pleased with Ty. We had talked about his running and needing to be a more dynamic running threat. Are you seeing that in practice? Does he look like he, he said he worked on cutting and that type of stuff, making people miss? Are you seeing that? I know it. You, when he's not being tank, tackled, it's hard to tell. Well, yeah, he, I mean, I, I really believe he's gotten better. You know, his, his feet, he worked really hard this offseason. Plus, we also remind him, he's not Malcolm and he's 220. You know what I mean? Will Worth, you know, ran okay the way he ran. He's just got to be him, you know, just we're not expecting him to be Malcolm. Uh, but, you know, he's worked on his moves, but also they sometimes just lower your pads on people, just like he did, like I said, in, you know, the first touchdown against Army. I mean, that's, that's got to be him too, which, like I said, he size-wise reminds me of Will, you know, and so if he's that type of runner and that type of passer, that, that type of player, we, we'd all be happy. Scott, you off. Coach, how's the team responded to the new wrinkles that you've, you've brought in this year as you do each year in the uh, fall camp? Uh, that's a great question. I, I think you got to wait till the season starts. You know, you feel good about it when you run it against yourself. You know, there's, there's always – you always do new things. Everybody in football always tries new wrinkles in all three phases. And so um, some of us look good. Some of it were, you know – not really sure about it and some we'll find out on game day. But for the most part, I've been pleased with, you know, some of the things that we've added, you know, three phases. What have you thought about the development of the offensive line with both older players and younger players together? Well, we, we've had an opportunity to get a lot of young guys reps this camp because some of the guys that are starters from last year's have from last year have been injured. And so, you know, missing some of those guys, uh, wasn't good for the continuity of the ones, but it allowed some of our younger guys to develop. Uh, so now we're at a point now with two weeks out, our sole focus is on Delaware. And so this gives us an opportunity for those guys to get into shape, football shape. And so that's the big emphasis right now, just everything, all arrows are pointed towards Delaware now and try to get some continuity up front. Um, it was great to have the young guys play, but hopefully some of the guys that we're expecting to play will be able to you know, go for the rest of the two weeks. Uh, John Schofield. Hey, Coach, John Schofield here. You mentioned Delaware, so I'll go ahead and ask you, you know, this is not a walkover team. They play in the CAA. They are routinely um, in the conversation for FCS playoffs, at least in the past. They'd be battling it out with the likes of Villanova and JMU. So this is not like the last couple of seasons with BYU and Marshall, but it's not someone that you're looking past. So what is your evaluation of what you're going to see on September for, uh, 3rd so far? Well, you know, like, again, we just started our preparation for Delaware, and I've been impressed watching them on tape. You know what I mean? Just watching them physically, like, watch them physically against Rutgers. You know, early on, I mean, they held up. You know what I mean? It kind of started to – things started to get out of hand a little bit. But, uh, you know, you look at them on tape. They can run. They're physical. Obviously, they got really good coaches. Uh, but like you said, John, they've year in and year out. Uh, they've always been a good team. I'm not sure why we scheduled them, but that's another story. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, I mean, well, everything you said is right. And if I may, a quick follow up as you've come out of camp or as camp is about to end and you're in that pregame phase, how do you feel like everyone's come out of camp pretty injury free, pretty without incident? Like, how happy are you with how? through the black flag days of the, a lot of the heat through plebe summer. How, how has the entirety of the team come out of this? I've been really pleased. You know, we've had some minor injuries, like everybody that plays football. I mean, if you put on pads, someone's going to get hurt. It's a contact sport. 
but for the most part, John been really pleased, you know, just with um, the amount of injuries have been pretty minimal. Um, I like where we're at two weeks uh, into game, you know, getting ready for Delaware. So just right now, all of our focus is, has to change. It's up until this point is just working on ourselves and get, you know, get better ourselves. And, but now, you know, all of our focus has turned to them as we start to, you know, put our game plans together. And, and so I feel good about where we're at, but we still got a long ways to go. Uh, Phil Bergman. Coach, uh, what's impressed you most about the team through this three-week fall camp? Um, just their, the leadership of our, our seniors, our captains, their work, you know, like mentality. You know, we've got a lunch pail type a mentality a group. They just come to work. Um, I think not a lot of stars on the team, which I think our guys are okay with. You know, it just allow, lends us to play with the type of culture that we want to be you know, elite, eat on, on defense, you know, uh, you know, come off the ball and take care of the ball on offense. And so I, I think kind of the nature of this team, it's um, kind of a, an anonymous team that nobody really knows much about, which is right up our alley of who we are. I mean, we don't want the accolades. We just want to come grind. And I, I've been so pleased so far with that type of mentality, Phil. Now that you've gotten to see uh, the three captains on the practice field recently, uh, what have you seen out of Bijan, Kip, and um, John as well? Uh, first of all, it's just lead by example type of mentality. I've been impressed by their their fortitude and their strength of their leadership. Because some of them, you know, years past, you know, John Marshall didn't really talk much. Uh, Kip's always kind of been a jokester, and Bijan's kind of been a quiet young man in the locker room too, but both John Marshall and Bijan have stepped up vocally, you know, at practice and meetings. So I've just been impressed and seeing them take that mantle of captain, you know, and um, I, I'm used to Kip talking, you know, Kip likes to talk. Um, but to see those other two guys kind of uh, come in and, and, and step into that role has been awesome. And Kip's been awesome. I mean, you know, everybody loves Kip. He's got a great personality. I mean, he's just, He's, he's as tough as nails, so he brings a, a toughness mentality to our team. So I've been pleased with all three of them. Uh, Wags, three questions. So um, I was uh, doing my podcast with uh, Eric Tani and Keenan Reynolds yesterday, and we got talking about special teams, and Keenan asked, does Navy have a special teams coordinator, or do they still do it where each coach coaches a unit? I know that you divide units up among coaches, but didn't you have Coniglio kind of serving as overall coordinator of specials? No, he had, he just had two teams. Danny's you know I mean? got the title. Yeah, Tan, Danny's our special teams coordinator, but everybody still, you know, we have the guys that do different units. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at right now. Kind of well, like we've done. That. So, Mick, but Mick can, uh, kickoff return. No, Mick is kickoff. Danny's kickoff return, uh, Coniglio's punt, Ryan Crawford's punt return. You know, uh, Ryan was a special teams coordinator at Wake Forest. You know, so he has punt return. Um, Ashley has field goal, and Coniglio has uh, field goal block. So the, that leads to the question you expect. I mean, has that been a point of emphasis after what happened last season with the Boo Boos to make most to try not to have that kind of stuff? Most definitely. I mean, like you said, there's so many games, you know, you can think about from Air Force to Marshall to Houston, SMU, Cincinnati. I, mean, I forgot, I forgot totally about that at the half. We're driving to go, maybe to go ahead field goal, maybe to go ahead touchdown at the end of the half. And we're thinking, well, at least we'll kick a field and go up by three. They block it, get it back, and they go up by three going in the half. You know what I mean? So just those kind of things we can't overcome, you know. So you're, you're right, Wags. It's been a Huge emphasis this year, this offseason. We've done more special teams this camp than I've ever done uh, in any of our camps before. And so we've put in the time and hopefully it pays off. And then with regards to the uh, secondary, obviously knew not coaching back there anymore. And you always, you know, you knew he was going to get the safeties right. 
But uh, how do you like Crawford and RB back there working with the safeties and corners? Have you been pleased with their performances? Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they're doing a good job. You know, really good football coaches. Um, Coach Newberry still has his hand heavily involved in it. You know, what I mean, uh, he's not he's not sitting on the sideline twiddling his thumbs. You know, what I mean, so he's still heavily involved in everything and every aspect of our defense. It's it's his defense. You know, what I mean, he's the one who designed it, uh, and so. He's still heavily involved in a lot of things, but Coach Crawford and Coach Green have been doing a good job. Thanks. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, what are your uh, expectations for Mark Walker as a senior now in his journey as a, a Navy football player? Scott, he's had a really, really good offseason. I've been so pleased with him. And he's kind of come back. It seems like his legs are back. Last year, it seemed like he had a nagging hamstring pretty much the whole season. But he's hitting some of his catapult numbers that he had as a sophomore and he's running really well. He's been a great leader for the young wide receivers. Uh, we're expecting Mark to make some plays for us this year. You know, that's what we're expecting. We're expecting him to make some big time plays for us. And everything he's done so far in camp points to him having a great year. Being the fourth year for Coach Newberry with a lot of the players that you've been looking at for his style of defense, the length and the speed, how has that impressed you having a full roster of, of guys that you've been able to focus on for that defensively? Well, it's like you said, I mean, we've tried to get more athletic, um, you know, and focus on a premium on, on athleticism and speed. And, you know, and obviously we like to be big and fast, but we might sacrifice some size if we can get the speed and, um, we're as athletic on defense as we've ever been. Um, you know, we, we, again, we still got to get better. Guys are still learning things, but from an athletic standpoint, um, we have this type of players that we've been looking for. Thanks. John. Hey, Coach, it's got a last question for me. It's got to feel a little bit like Groundhog Day sometimes with you know, reform two for seven papers. You've now done this a bunch with a bunch of classes, but I'm sure it doesn't get old. Has the brigade reformed as, as all the juniors sign their uh, two for seven papers? Just what kind of feeling of pride did you have about your players? Well, first of all, super excited about, you know, all of our guys that, you know, are coming back, you know, to make that commitment to serve our country, first and foremost. Uh, we started to exchange uh, scouts a little bit earlier, you know, just so guys can kind of know where they stand on the depth chart. Because normally we do that today, but like you said, John, it's today is a tough day. School, the plebes are back to class. I mean, first time to class, and then you find out you're this, uh, you know, this on the depth chart. So we just want to give guys early to let that digest and soak in a little bit. And you know, unfortunately, there are some long faces a little bit last week. Because if you're a competitor, you don't want to see yourself on that on the depth chart. But we got some of that stuff out of the way early. Uh, like you said, so it didn't all just hit us today just for that exact reason you said it. The start of school, reform, two for seven is always a tough day. Um, but I, I, we still haven't practiced yet, so we'll see how practice goes today. But I'm hoping some of that stuff pays dividends. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, John. Dale Bergman. Coach, uh, in the quarterback room, what have you seen from Xavier and Masai? I've been pleased, I've been pleased with Xavier. You know, just uh, he missed all of spring ball. Uh, you know, so from a rep standpoint, he was, you know, way back from Ty. Ty kind of separated himself because, you know, Xavier played, played lacrosse. This, and we knew that would happen. You know, I mean, there's no way you can't manufacture reps. It's Division One football. You know what I mean? So, uh, but I've been pleased with his attitude. He's come to work every day and, there's some stuff that he's picked up right where he left off. And there's some stuff he's rusted in. And some stuff that I feel like if he had been there in the spring would have helped him. But he's continued to, you know, just work and grind. He's, X is a great young man. And the same thing with Masai. Masai is the senior. Uh, he, he's battling to try to get on the field. And um, I, I don't have any complaints about Masai. Just a great young man. And both he and X are working really hard. On a lighter note, the Team Talent Show was this past weekend. Were there any funny acts or funny people up there? Yeah, we, I, you know, I got to talk to our recruiting part. We definitely got to get some of this stuff on, get on social media. Just, 
you know, some of the stuff we don't like to show too much of our stuff, our practices and workouts, or, you know, some teams show a lot of what we do. We, our, our deal is, you know, we, we just let our work speak for itself. We don't need to put ourselves lifting or running on social media, but I think this kind of stuff would be cool because it gives light, you know, to recruits and people just who we are as a football program. But there's, there's some really good, this is a really good year, including our MC, um, Omar Nelson, he took the reins from RB Green. And so he, he did a really good job. Wags, unlimited. Well, obviously we talked about the offensive line having 12 different starting combinations last year. Um, and that, you know, you lost some guys to graduation. How, how do you see that unit coming along? Do you, are you liking the chemistry and has everybody been able to post for practice? Most of the guys that are running with the ones, I mean, are you developing the chemistry you would like to see? Well, it's just like, I mean, like I said earlier, I mean, a lot of our guys that are going to play were injured or, you know, didn't get a lot of reps in camp. So it allows you to develop some depth, but from a chemistry standpoint, you want the guys that are going to play. And so, uh, hopefully those guys will be back today and we can have two weeks of building that chemistry, which we need. And, um, uh, you know, we're expected to have a, a couple guys back today. I was talking to Coach McDonald about the fullbacks, and obviously uh, you got two guys that are young and uh, very, fairly inexperienced. They didn't get much reps, game reps last year. Uh, what are you seeing out of Anton Hall and uh, Logan Point? Um, two explosive, dynamic backs, you know, um, Anton, you know, super explosive, dynamic, great make you miss ability. Um, Logan is more of a physical runner, but a great speed. And also Dabo, you know, Dabo, our third string. I mean, uh, really pleased with those guys have had a really good camp. And I, I feel like, you know, that position, we're, we're, that's going to be one of our strengths. Is our B-back position. I and think we are from, from multiple uh, coaches that I think Ivan and Joe DuPay that the slots are, this is one of the fastest, most athletic groups of slots that, you know, from top to bottom that you have. Would you agree with that? Just just top to bottom. You know, we've always had speed there, but maybe not the depth, the amount of speed. I mean, we got some young plebes that have been getting a lot of reps. I mean, we're as fast as we've ever been here. And it's like, like you said, it, just the depth of it, the amount of backs that can run. Um, we're really excited. Got some, got some guys that can run at the A back. Got some, you know, speed at the fullback position. And so we're really excited about that. Uh, 